Hey, hello guys. Welcome to JVC Motive once again. Today, we'll be reviewing something spectacular, although coming in late, but it's the Honda Civic 2016, the EX model. I hope you love this one. This is the newly redesigned Honda Civic 2016. It represents the 10th edition for the Civic. The new Civic is wider in stance and lower in height when compared to the previous generation Civic. Something that makes the Civic eye-catching while on the road, even while I saw it at first, are the contours all around the car. You know, starting from the bonnet down to the side of the car and even to the rear, you find great lines that really that are really pleasing to the eyes. Taking a look at it from this position, you find out that it has a chrome that runs straight from the headlamp to the other headlamp. And it features a halogen bulb as a low beam and a reflector as its high beam. Not forgetting the fog lamp down below. Something that is eye-catching, let's look at it from this angle. Is the way this is carved they've paid so much attention to detailing and shape on this car on the wheels it features a 18 inch rim the tire is 285 by 50 and it's nsf dunlop the wheel is a two-tone finish the interior is black and the outside is finished in silver it has a ventilated disc brake and rear it has a solid disc brake this particular color is called maroon for us to gain access into the car, let's lock the car. This is the remote key. It has a lock button, unlock, the remote start and the trunk release. There is no panic button here as you can find um, in the cars in the United States. So it's just a standard key and with a provision to release the main key if you wish to. So the car is presently locked. Let's, let's see that. It's presently locked. To unlock the car, you just need to hit the unlock button. It unlocks. So let's hit the unlock button, unlock the car, and to lock the car back, simply tap on it once, or if the car is unlocked, tapping on this button once, locks the car. That's how it goes. To remote start the car, let's watch this. Tap on this button once, the lock button once, and hit the unlock button. Tap and hold until the indicator flashes, you let go. That's it, the remote start. Turn it off. Hold the remote start button for a while, the engine turns off. Getting access into the car, it's a smart entry. Have the key in my pocket. See, there it goes. Putting your hand in here unlocks the car. And you step in. In general, it features a two-tone interior. Here you have a Twitter speaker, have, it's plastic but um, finished in silver. The door opener you have, the buttons to um, control your side mirrors, to lock and unlock the doors, to lock the window so no one passenger can operate apart from you. The two front windows are auto, down and up. The two back are, as you press, uh, they go down and as you hold, they come up. Have some large storage here, this button to release the trunk. This owner had fitted him with a seat cover but because it's very dusty and he wants to preserve the fabric on his seat you have a lever to adjust the seat height then another lever to um, recline or uh, bring forward um, the seat back and you have of course another bar here to drag the seat forward or backward. To open the engine bay you need to pull on this lever while it's open put your hand slightly to the left of the Honda logo and push to the right it goes up. We need a prop here, but use my hand to hold it in place while we take a look. It's a four cylinder 2.0 with 
producing 158 horsepower and 140 cubic feet of torque. It says X Dreams Technology. It's quite dirty, it's not been washed in a um, couple of months now. There's the air intake, the fuse box, battery, hydraulic level. Coated in, coated in orange so that you know you need to check on it. And that's the LED signature light while the engine is running. Let's take a look at it from this angle. You see that LED light there? Very bright at night. And while we are inside to start the car, you have the key on you, put your leg on the brake, you have an LED light that glows around the engine starts top button and you tap on it. comes alive. Let's turn on the AC. It's quite a hot weather out there. So the instrument cluster it's, it's very nice to view. It has a very nice instrument cluster all LED. It has a digital speedometer. The engine coolant gauge is by your left hand side. You can see right there the marker lights telling you the level at which it is now and the fuel gauge by your right hand side. Um, Brief out is my phone connected. I have um, the rev counter here. That's it right there at one, below one. I have the gear, it's in park. The green leaf above the park is telling us that we are driving in economy mode. We have uh, another light lighted there showing that the cruise control is on. Outside is 40 degrees Celsius. We've driven 28,384 in the car and that shows you the clock there. Looking at the steering, you have button to control the mini screen right there. You can switch from, um, you can go into my phone from here. Just by hitting the enter button, you can scroll through um, speed dial, call history, and phone book. So just the volume right there. See, you can touch. It's actually touch sensitive. Also, you could also tap on it if you don't want to swipe. Swipe through. Could also change from phone to AM, to FM, to audio apps, to Bluetooth, to USB, and you know we are back right to beginning again this is to take your calls to hang up on calls or to go back voice activated to call um, this button you could use it to call someone on your phone book as long as you have that preset already and um, this information button you could cycle through your, your phone um, the music to see um, your trip computer to know how economically you're driving this puts this display right on the screen right screen there cycle back to here you can see averaging a trip a 35 done 35 kilometers and total hours we've driven on the car tapping on the button again music phone and that's it right there this is um the cruise control section now the cruise is on let's turn it off for a minute see the light goes off there hit the button again it comes on you have a uh, reset or to increase uh, the speed which we are doing, cancel and we have the set or to decrease on the speed which we are doing. Uh, have the Honda logo embedded in the steering. You also have the airbag right there. This is to auto level the headlamp at night, to turn on or turn off the pack sensor, to turn off the traction control right there. Uh, the screen is a 7.1 inch screen and very nice touch sensitive have some information displayed this system actually runs on an android operating system could slide down you could see some other features if it shows you your phone's battery power level location um, gps you have audio phone and info audio you can go through music choose folders track adjust the sound change your source we have Actually, eight sources take from eight sources FM, AM, just as we saw on the center screen here. And um, Bluetooth HDMI, yeah, it has an HDMI port right down here where you have some storage also. And moving further, we have the phone, have the phone menu, speed dial, dial, and phone book. You can go here and see what you have on your phone book and 
and all that you can select it to come from you have a dial if you want to dial someone's number the system is quite slow and uh, sometimes it's very responsive some other times majority of the times it's very slow to uh, to click but typing here it's uh, very responsive but hitting on most menus kind of lags this is the information you have your trip computer clock and some other thing they could select um, from which you a system you want to see and you want to see on the screen so up here we have uh, AC telling us the temperature at which the AC is do at we have your audio, we have the source you could ch directly choose from a source which you want your audio to sound from um, that's it phone network Bluetooth is connected battery level GPS also right down here it's everything for the climate control tap here you can adjust turn on the AC it's on auto mode now it's actually on but um, it's, as long as it's on low it's on automatic you can send uh, the air to your feet feet and face fe face feet then um, vent and feet then this is to control the fan speed push for automatic turn on turn off air recirculation the front vent and the rear defroster then also has a um, dual climate control here it's now it's low low if the person on the passenger side wants a warmer air then we can increase the temperature for just that person you see this is at 20 now this is still at low but if you want to synchronize back just tap on it and it goes back to low uh, this is just a, a small feature put it to hold my phone in place while driving it's a CVT continual variable transmission has a pack reverse neutral drive sport and low range this is electronic brake hold and electronic parking brake the economy button if I tap on that now it moves away from economy now it says echo off now it says echo on again by tapping on it. it has a USB plug in my phone to charge for the GCC countries, the Gulf countries, uh, there is no Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in any car. Just as in Chevrolet, you won't find the OnStar on feature here in this region. We have a large space here. We have a cup holder there and another large space. We have a USB here, 1.0 amperes here. Unfortunately, there are no Easter eggs. If I should sit behind myself, there are no much space here, it's very cramped. We need to cock ourselves in. Because the seat is quite low to the ground, the floor is quite high, you have your nails popping high into the sky, <laughs> to the roof of the car. So, quite comfortable, yeah, with no leg space at all. I need to watch my head while coming out. Generally, it's really comfortable. Uh, no headroom at all. Probably two fingers, one finger. Coming out, you need to struggle to come out right from there. Right in here you have that two-tone finish and this metallic silver stripe attached right to the door to give it a nice flare. You have AC vent back here. That's the front, looking at it from behind. Taking this armrest down, we have a cup holder right here. That's the other space there. We have this window right here to um, take off some blind spots around the car. To gain access to the fuel door, the car needs to be unlocked. When the car is unlocked, then you can push this to open. And you see it's a capless system. And when you're done refueling, you just need to take off the nozzle and don't worry about where you've kept your cap or if it's properly tight or not. After that, you just need to close. When you lock the car, this also locks, cannot open up. Coming to the back, we have pack assist sensors, four of them around the car. We have the backup camera, sliding slightly right to the camera, we have a button to release the trunk. Quite huge, quite huge trunk. We have spare tire going down right there. We have, um, what else? First thing we should have the jack and also 
a funnel in case you need to use a gas can. It's a 6040 fold down seat, as you can see, it's a divider there. And to release them, you just need to pull this, go to the back of the car and fold the seat down manually. Let's look at the car once more with the headlamp turned on. That's the fog lamp. There we have the side marker light. Have the turn signal integrated into the side mirror. Coming right back. Have the LED. I'll see the signature light because when you see this in the dark, you know for sure it's a Honda Civic. So driving in the Honda Civic is really fun and you, you feel confident while you're in the car because of the independent suspension all around the car. You could actually tell what every tire is doing. You could toss the car around corners even while doing 60 or 80 and the car is planted to the ground without any disturbance at all. Because of its shape, it just, it just goes. One thing you would have to consider is while driving in echo mode, you don't get that throttle response as, as you're supposed to get as you're supposed to get while driving in the normal mode uh, you need to even after you float um, bury the pedal to the metal uh, you don't still get it going as you would get it going on um, if you're driving in normal mode or, or, or sports mode uh, talking about the lane watch system indicated now to turn right and a camera comes up makes me see everything on on my um, in, in my blind spot there, just at the right hand side, so I could know what the guy next to me is doing, and it's safe for me to go. And it also gives you, it also gives you, you know, some guidance lines. You know, apart from indicating right to turn it on, you could press a button just on this stock here, and it, it comes on and stays there permanently. If you really want to see what is going on, you know, there you could actually uh, just push that button make it come on permanently and you just you just watch while we are driving in echo mode just right on the instrument cluster here, right above it, there is an LED light that turns green. When it's green, it shows you how efficient you're driving. Um, while it's turning white, you know you're beginning to lose that efficiency. You're beginning to consume more fuel while, while driving. While it's white, then you know you're, you're getting all the fuel you can. You should go and see some info right here and let's select the trip computer then you will see what we, we are currently doing here you know on the long run it, I, I would say it's not bad it's very economical I have a call coming in now and um, don't know who this is really I have to ignore the call I've got no name I don't know who's calling so this is what it's all about this is how the trip computer looks like so you could monitor it in, in real time you could um, see your current drive you could actually um, see your history you know you could also slide around the screen as I said before it's a seven inch screen so you could really slide around it has uh, some other home screens these ones are empty here you could uh, see the settings of the car you have a um, lot of tweaks in here you could use to control how you want the car just to sit 
your personal taste on it. You have, you have this feature, okay? Let's go into settings. So you have this to adjust the clock, you have the one for your phone, you have another one to adjust the info, then the camera, to set up the camera to do all that, you have the audio system, you have the main system for home screen, menu icon, configuration instrument, display settings, touch panel sensitivity, guidance volume, voice recognition, volume view, volume clock and you know, all that, all that you have good. For your audio, you have cover art and audio source pop-up you know. so Bluetooth and Wi-Fi you have Bluetooth status, Bluetooth Wi-Fi and you know, all that you could actually share the hotspots from your phone onto the car and while you're in park and that's only when you could browse, watch videos and um, watch pictures also and use the calculator which is on board here but if you're in drive, you can't do any of the features mentioned. Here is the settings for the vehicle. So because we are driving now, these um, features won't be highlighted. You have a um, deflation warning system just as this. Once you have um, a deflation in any of the tires, you have uh, you have a warning. You have, you have a notification on the instrument cluster telling you you need to check your tire pressure. Then you have the meter setup, keyless access setup, how to assess your car while using the key. You have the door window setup also. Um, should the doors unlock? Should the doors lock while you walk away? No, that's a, a, a feature the car has. Should you be thinking of owning the Honda Civic? It's a great choice and a smart move for a small family, a bachelor. Is the right car to have. If you're a large family and you want to get something much more spacious, then I think the Honda Civic is not for you. If you also live in an area where the terrain, the road is not that good, where it's bad, you need to do some a little bit of off-roading, I wouldn't recommend you getting the Civic because it's quite low, it sits to the ground and you could have some bumps underneath the car while driving through some of these uh, rough terrains. But in general, out of five star i would give the civic a four star owing to its right handling its maneuverability and its economy its maintenance on the downside i would say there are a little bit of poor finishing on the car probably because this was rushed to release i don't know if it was actually rushed it was released in a hurry but there are some poor finishing on the car only when you own the car you could see this like some space just just like here you know just like this this portions now they, they don't really fit and you have you have a lot of air noise you know in the cabin while driving then also this poor finishes on the car looking as if the parts we are not actually fit into place to together and that's it from jbc motive hope to see you on the next one peace hello thank you for watching our video so far please your subscription your likes dislikes and comments is a motivation to us. It tells us how well we're faring, you know. Also to up our games in production. We've acquired not just a new studio exclusive for JVC Motive for our work, but we've also acquired a lot of tools, a lot of cameras, a lot of softwares, so we can give you the best of what we do. Also, watch more videos. We have a lot of videos on our channels that you could keep yourself entertained with. And see you on the next one. Bye.